Today I will be demonstrating the application of a humeral brace with Benicast Advanced using a focused rigidity technique. Take the first piece of stockinette and roll it into a doughnut, then apply it directly to the arm, extending it onto the shoulder. Apply padding along the anterior border. I have used a double layer of undercast padding. Adhesive felt padding is a good alternative. And then apply a second layer of stockinette. This needs to be measured from the elbow of the affected limb across the shoulders to the opposing elbow. Roll the stockinette up the arm, cut into the axilla and pull over the shoulder. Make a second cut in the centre of the roll at the nape of the neck and stretch the two pieces across the body and tie in the opposing axilla. Pull the stockinette across the shoulder and secure with tape. This will provide a smooth template for applying the brace. I will now apply two small pieces of fleecy web directly onto the epicondyles of the humerus. Felt, if felt was being used, I would use a negative padding approach. Now apply your gloves and using the Benicast Advanced 4 inch, make a two layer slab fitting from the elbow to the shoulder. Cut the slab and dip both the roll and the slab into room temperature water, providing a moderate squeeze to remove excess moisture. Position the slab longitudinally from the shoulder to the elbow and using the remaining bandage, secure the slab by bandaging from the distal aspect of the limb, covering 50% working up the arm to the axilla. To prevent the brace from being bulky in the axilla, lay the casting material across the shoulder by folding back and forth, covering 50% as before. Now place two or three pieces of adhesive hook to the brace dependent on the length of the limb and secure with a wet bandage following the process as with the casting material across the shoulder. Ensure the patient is relaxed and then mould the brace onto the limb paying particular attention to the glenohumeral joint of the shoulder and the distal aspect of the brace to ensure the brace fits to the contours of the limb and provides excellent compression. Once the brace has reached the initial set, this can take approximately four minutes. Remove the bandage and mark the brace at the proximal aspect it can fit over the shoulder. This will provide no function with regards to the principles of bracing. However, in some instances, it will help to hold the brace in place and therefore make the patient more comfortable and reduce the pain. At the distal end of the limb, the cast should cover the epicondyles. However, the olecranon and the antecubital fossa should be free as this will enable the patient to participate with pendulum exercises. Remove the cast by cutting along the anterior border using scissors and nibblers if required to prevent pressure on the limb. Remove the cast carefully from the limb and trim following the template previously drawn and also cut a thin strip out approximately one centimetre along the opening of the brace. To prevent pressure from the edge of the brace, make a tongue, cut a piece of fleecy web the same length of the brace and stick a piece of undercast padding along 2 cm from the end and stick that into the brace along the opening. Edge the brace with either elasticated strapping or fleecy edging tape. Reapply the brace to the limb 
and add the opposing non-adhesive loop circumferentially to secure the brace. Ensure the brace fits securely, providing excellent compression and feels comfortable for the patient and also it does not cause constriction to the joints not included in the cast.